in uh, January of 24 was implanted with six Utah arrays. You know, this is like 50 plus years after my spinal cord injury. For the first time in human history, it is implanted in my, in a, the prefrontal cortex. It's the first time that, that the FDA had ever given permission for a, an implant to be put into the prefrontal cortex, which, you know, is kind of the, the seat of our higher levels of reasoning and, you know, executive functioning. There are three what are called pedestals that sit on the top of my head, kind of in a, what I call a cyber hawk. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 definitely. All in a line at the center yeah. of your head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, these pedestals, the top of them, you know, screws off. When everything's hooked up, um, there's, you know, 380 some channels that are able to be recorded. You know, from what I recall, there was some conversation during our panel discussion that your neurosynapses are firing in a rhythmic and even in a tonal way. You know, I wanted to use my own sounds of my neurons firing in um, a song, particularly in the context of, of performing music and performing with, you know, a band. Would that alter the specific individual neurons that are firing? And would I be able to incorporate that in an artistically interesting way? Obviously, you know, it's different. If I sing, could I learn to sing and activate specific neurons at the same time? And, you know, it would kind of be an additional instrument almost. Can neurons sing? 